Thanks for joining us for Face the State. I'm Angela and Tracy is enjoying the holiday. And on this Christmas morning, we are going to have a fireside chat with the leader of Ohio. 10 TV's Kevin Landers recently sat down with Governor Mike DeWine for a one-on-one -on -one interview. For more than 20 minutes, they talked about some of the most controversial topics of 2022. We start this morning with, with what the governor had to say about the abortion issue. Majority of Ohioans believe that abortion should be legal. The way Ohio's law is right now, it's very restrictive. Do you see yourself supporting any exceptions to the abortion law? Here, here's what I've said. This matter we thought was going to be taken up by the, the General Assembly, by the legislature in the lame duck session. Obviously it was not. We would expect the legislature, the new legislature, to take this issue up uh, in, in, in January. Um, a couple things and I say this as, as governor of all the people of the state of Ohio. Uh, as we go through this debate, it's important for us to remember that whatever side we are on, there are people on the other side of good faith, good people, and this is a, an issue that people feel very, very strongly about, and it's important for us to try to conduct this debate in, in a civil way where we show respect for our fellow Ohioans. Number two, I'm pro-life. I believe that it's important that we save as many lives a, as we can. Uh, what I've said to the General Assembly, uh, and again, I will say it again, is as we go about this, as they go about the job of writing a new law in regard to abortion, they need to keep in mind that it needs to be a law that will stay on the books. It needs to be a law that is sustainable. And by that I mean we are a state that allows people, the people of the state, to go to the ballot box and override what the legislature has done. And so as the legislature considers what to put in this abortion bill, it's very important. We try to save as many lives as we can, but at this, and at the same time we have something that's sustainable and that does not get overridden when it goes on, on the ballot. So again, that balance has, has to be achieved, and I hope it can be achieved in a civil way where we don't tear the state apart uh, debating this, this issue. This is, we have other things that we need to focus on as well. This is very important, uh, and again, we need to save as many lives as we can, but we also need to have something that's sustainable that will, be, uh, that will continue on. Governor DeWine also talked about the redistricting fight we saw in 2022 and why, in his opinion, the system didn't work. This was a new, uh, relatively new, two constitutional amendments. Uh, Democrats, Republicans came together to try to come up with a system that would make redistricting reapportionment work better. It didn't. Uh, we, it just did not work. We ended up in court. Uh, unfortunately, we ended up with a Supreme Court series of decisions uh, that, to some extent, flew in the face of what the objective was. The objective, one of the main objectives, was to have more compact districts uh, and at the same time have more competitive districts. Everyone, I think, believes that we should have more competitive districts rather than fewer competitive districts. Yet, if you look at the Supreme Court decision, it compelled us uh, in, in, in some cases to have fewer, not more, competitive districts. No one envisioned that, but that's where we are today, and that's a problem. It's a problem that how are you gonna fix? Look, I think the only thing, the only way we're really gonna be able to permanently fix this is to go back, try to put a coalition of Democrats and Republicans together and come up with a new constitutional amendment. I don't know any other way of doing it. So we also asked Governor DeWine about three ongoing debates, the future of vaccines, the death penalty, and whether it's time to make Ohio a no income tax state. I would love to have no in income tax. I'd love to have no real estate tax. And uh, look, I, I don't see how uh, you move to no income tax at this point. Um, you know, the numbers don't work. Uh, if we're talking about <clears throat> you know, funding our schools, 
giving parents more choice in regard to our schools, keeping up our state parks, uh, focusing on mental health. Um, there's no way you could do that uh, by totally eliminating the income tax. And what, the other thing that would happen is all other taxes would go up dramatically. You know, it's easy to say, let's do away with the income tax. But you're going you're gonna to see sales tax would have to go up dramatically, uh, would impact the poorest uh, of our citizens, citizens who, who, who need help the most. Uh, you would see real estate taxes go up. Again, they're high enough as it is. We're, I talk to senior citizens a lot who tell me they don't want to see their real estate taxes go up. So it's, it's nice to say we're going to do away with income tax until you look at what happens when you do it. And I don't think people want those consequences. Look, can we, can we reduce taxes? Yes, we've reduced taxes uh, under, under my watch. And the legislature has passed reductions. We can pass future reductions in, in, in income tax and other taxes. But to say we're going to totally do away with it uh, is just, I don't see how that happens. You've halted all executions in the state until the Department of Corrections develops a new court-approved execution protocol. Does the death penalty have a future in Ohio? I don't think you're going to, you, there's been no executions uh, since I became governor. I don't anticipate we will see any uh, executions as long as I'm governor of the state. Um, look, we are in a situation where the only way executions can legally take place is through lethal injection. And yet, we have drug companies where we would get these drugs or we would get their drugs somewhere who have threatened the state, threatened the people of Ohio, and said, if you use our drug in execution, you're not going to be able to buy our drugs that save lives. Uh, state hospitals are not going to be able to get these drugs that we essentially need. So we're, we're in a situation, uh, unless the law has changed, where we're not going to see executions going forward. There's a bill before the House that would ban mandates of COVID-19 vaccines at colleges and universities in Ohio. Was that something you'd sign? Well, we don't know what the final bill would be. Um, you know, we're, what we're not, we're not seeing today, uh, educators, uh, you know, penalizing children uh, or students uh, for not being vaccinated. We're not, as far as COVID, we are, we are not seeing that. We're well on our way through this COVID. It's still out there very, very much. So look, I've got to see what's, what else is in that bill. Well, it's clear Governor DeWine has a lot to tackle as he begins a second term. DeWine says he doesn't have a New Year's resolution, but after he's sworn in January 9th, DeWine says there is a three-point plan in play. Are Ohioans going to see a different governor this next four years in terms of the way you govern? Well, Will you stand up to your party? Look, the, the people of the state of Ohio have given me the most precious thing there is, and that's time. Uh, time to finish our business, our unfinished business. And we're going to really focus on three things. We're going to focus, uh, and this is in no particular order, we're going to focus on jobs. Uh, Jim Rose, you know, once, once said that jobs solve a lot of social problems, maybe not all social problems, but they solve a lot. Jobs are very important. We are creating jobs at a very fast rate in the state of Ohio, and we're going to continue to do that. Uh, number two is education. Uh, from reaching out to a pregnant mother who's having difficulties and helping her all the way to getting, having a 60-year-old who is still working and making sure that his or her skill sets are where they need to be so that they can continue to be productive. We're going to focus on education because that's how we give everybody an opportunity to live their American dream. The third thing is mental health. Uh, we have neglected mental health as a country. Uh, John Kennedy, uh, when he was president, the last major bill he signed was the Community Mental Health Act. In that, we made a pledge that we would deinstitutionalize our hospitals, but at the same time, we would build a system where every Ohioan had the chance to get, and every American had the chance to get mental health. We've not done that. We are moving in that right direction, and we're going to have, continue to have a real sense of urgency in that area. And you can watch Kevin's full sit-down interview with Governor DeWine on 10TV.com. Well, the new year will also bring a new U.S. Senator representing Ohio. But we asked the senior U.S. Senator from Ohio to look back at 2022. Yeah, I think our biggest successes were, were we're dealing with people's problems every day. The PACT Act, 
uh, which I co-wrote with Senator Tester, the chair of the Veterans Committee, uh, will provide health care to um, literally tens of thousands of Ohio's veterans who were exposed uh, to these, these uh, football field sized burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan where they, where they breathe this air that six, eight, ten years later cause, cause sometimes fatal uh, health care problems and bronchial diseases and cancers. Uh, we passed the infrastructure bill, Senator Portman, I worked on that to make sure that, I mean, with strong Buy America provisions so that that um, when, when work is done on any number of these um, road projects and water and sewer systems and broadband, that we use American products and American workers. What we did with the CHIPS Act is gonna help Columbus in a big, big way with Intel and all the outgrowth and jobs uh, from that huge, massive project northeast of the city of Columbus. So all of those things passed, we've gotta make sure they're implemented in the most important way. Senator Sherrod Brown also noted that some failures and said there's one thing that should have happened but didn't. Uh, the most important thing we haven't gotten done is the child is expanding the child tax credit. It expired a year ago when conservative, mostly pro, uh, just well, ultra conservative lawmakers killed it. It was um, it provided uh, child 90 percent of Ohio's children benefited from it, all but the 10 percent wealthiest families. It would have been $250, $300 per child per month. It, it, it was in effect for six months. It eased people's lives. It, it would have blunted the effects of inflation for so many families that are suffering now. Um, I'm gonna keep fighting for it until we get it back into law. Well, now that you have heard from the people in power, we take some of those same questions to political experts. Next, what they say was the biggest takeaway from 2022. But first, we want to put you in the Christmas spirit with the musical stylings of Hilary Davidson. Snow, I'd like to wish my family back in Ohio a very Merry Christmas and everyone else a very happy holidays. Hope you guys enjoy the cold weather while we enjoy the nice 60 degree weather here. Thank you for that. 2022 is almost over and we saw a lot of ups and downs in Ohio and in the U.S. as a whole. What those were exactly depends on who you ask. For a look back at the biggest political topics of the year, we went to Professor Herb Asher with the Ohio State University Department of Political Science and also Terry Casey, a Republican strategist. They both weighed in on J.D. Vance's Senate win during the November election. Trump's trophy, his, probably his biggest victory, was helping uh, J.D. Vance in Ohio get the Republican nomination, because without Trump's endorsement, uh, Vance would not have won that primary. And then Vance went on to win the, uh, uh, the general election. So probably as Ohio relates to uh, 
the national midterm elections, the two most significant things were, in fact, uh, uh, J.D. Vance, which, again, was Trump's major success this year, and then also the Democrats picking up a net of one, though, in the U.S. House districts. One of the things that he's going to have to look at is how much of a hand is out from the Democrats to cooperatively work together bipartisanly, uh, but also how much does he want to do that. But the advantage he's got is he doesn't have a past record and isn't as locked in to say past congressional votes as if he was elected from being a member of Congress. And he's got a six year term, so he's got time, but he needs to do things. But people are going to be looking at because he's one of the youngest members of the Senate. Both experts also brought up the abortion debate, and they both believe it is a topic that will develop even more in 2023. There's obviously a lot of issues that are unresolved. Abortion's an example because there's debate of, and in, in the future we might have a constitutional amendment that sets uh, something different than what we have by current law, and even the current law, Senate leaders realize that they're going to have to go back and do some tweaking because some of the legal definitions of protecting the life of the mother, how do you exactly define that? So abortion's an example where the details matter in terms of what point is it legal or appropriate or inappropriate to terminate a pregnancy. So there's a lot of things where the legislature is going to have to speak. You know, one of the things that's come up now, and it's probably going to be delayed until next year, is uh, a conception bill, a personhood bill. Uh, that says restrictive a bill as possible. It is the most anti-abortion bill. Will it pass? I don't know. But there's certainly a, a, a subset of Republicans in the legislature who would want to do that. Uh, that will be, that bill is so out of touch with where Ohioans are on abortion. Meaning if you look at any public opinion poll, you will see that the vast majority of Ohioans will say, we believe there should be, be in fact abortion rights with restrictions, with limits. And next week, we will talk with both political experts about 2023 and what you need to watch for from the State House. Still to come, lighting up the holiday at the State House with a yearly tradition. But first, we give you the holiday concert from Whetstone High School. Hi, I'm Specialist Alyssa Heft, currently deployed with the 37th Infantry Brigade Combat Team. I just wanted to wish my family and friends back home a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Also wanted to give a little shout out to my four-year-old cousin, Brandy. I love and miss you guys so much, and I'll see you soon. 
and thank you for your service. Well, six days from now, the Ohio State Buckeyes will take on the Georgia Bulldogs in the Peach Bowl. Governor Mike DeWine says he's taking himself to the game with this prediction for the college football playoffs. We're looking for an upset, and I think, look, I think this Ohio State team on any given day or any given night can beat any, any uh, team in the country. That would be nice, Governor. Well, on this Christmas morning, here is the annual tree lighting at the Ohio State House that reflects the historic style of when the building was new in 1861. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Baby Santa Claus and all his reindeer Santa, Mrs. Claus, and there's Matthew, hi Matthew, and there's Braden, ho oh, ho, Matthew and Braden, hi Santa, welcome. Can everybody say hi to Santa? Hi. Santa, was that a was that a long trip for you? Yes, it was. And I got I want to ask you: Do you know what kind of motorcycle that Santa rides? Well, let me ask the first lady. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Do you kids know? You want to tell him, Santa? Holly Davidson. <laughs> oh, Santa. That was a good one. You got me on that one, Santa. Are you? Oh, Mrs. Claus, who's your friend? This, this is Archie. And Archie? Yes. Uh, Archie, do you talk or make noise or what do you do? Well, not really. He likes to, he and what, likes to eat. Food. And what is Archie? Archie? Is he a little penguin? He's a little penguin, and he just sort of travels, make sure he handles the GPS so Santa oh. don't get lost. So the only, the, the only question I have, Santa, and I've always wanted to ask you this, do you get lost sometimes? No. You get, you get to the right kids' houses and all the always, way? Always. Always. Are you ready? I'm ready. To light, I'm ready. To, to light the Christmas tree? Yes, I'm ready. Mrs. Claus, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, Matthew and Braden, are you guys ready? Hey, are you guys ready? Are you going to help Santa? Are you ready? <laughs> All right. All right. All right, kids, let's do a, let's do a countdown for Santa. And we'll start at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Santa. Just beautiful. Thank you all for joining us for Face the State on this Christmas Day. We'll be back again next week. Enjoy your holiday week.